The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily represent those of this station or its management. It's time now for Where You Live with Gene Sullivan, the show that deals with the news and events that affect you the most. Whether you rent or own, live in an HOA, single family home, or an apartment building, Gene will tackle the issues right where you live. So, from the True North Painting Studios, here is the original man of steel, Resolve himself, who stands for truth, justice, and the association way. Here's Gene Sullivan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. When you're looking for the right painting contractor, what do you look for? Isn't it someone who will respect you, your time, your property, and your budget? That's what you can expect from True North Painting. Find out more about this exceptional company by going online at truenorthpainting.com. That's trunorthpainting.com, or give them a call at 952-831-1433. I'm also brought to you by the great folks at Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. We've got a lot to cover on today's show, so let's begin, as we do every week, with property management in the news. Property management in the news is brought to you by Home Furniture and Abbey Floor Coverings. Their showrooms are staffed with professionals who will help you choose what you need to fit both your lifestyle and budget. Whatever you need, chances are they'll have what you're looking for. If you wish to avail yourself of special pricing, you're not going to find anywhere else. All Where You Live listeners can call Customer Service Coordinator Lori Matson at 952 224 2663. Our uh, first uh, story is uh, still dealing with uh, just some of the problems and aftermath after Hurricane Sandy from a couple of years ago. A uh, good number of properties, homeowner associations, that still don't have everything uh, up to par once again. And uh, part of the issue might be. Uh, on uh, what uh, FEMA is using in their uh, description in qualifying uh, what qualifies uh, for aid and for them to give assistance. And that's our first story here today. A homeowners association, condo association called Shoreview Condominiums, and that's in Queens, uh, New York, was hammered by Superstorm Sandy. They suffered... Uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. But uh, besides to the everyone's individual homes, of course, a good part of this is also entranceways, uh, includes uh, residential areas, what would be called a common element, things that are shared by all. And it says that the Federal Emergency Management Agency, uh, FEMA, says they are not going to help. And here is the reason why. Uh, it says that uh, FEMA uh, says that uh, they have categorized and said that they are here to give grants. And a grant, of course, is free money, something that doesn't have to be paid back. To uh, And it's uh, designated and earmarked for people for their individual homes to get uh, families back on their feet. It's not meant to be used, uh, that this grant money uh, specifically, for businesses, for people who are in business just to make money. The problem is, is that homeowner associations are also uh, labeled as uh, corporations, and that is where the rub begins. Uh, homeowners association, in every single one that is in existence, this would be all cooperatives, townhomes, condos, they are just like any other business in that they are required by the state and where they reside to uh, register each and every year that they are a corporation. Now, a corporation means that you have an entity and 
They want to know uh, you have a name of an entity, but you don't have the name of an individual. If you have my name, Gene Sullivan, people say, okay, where does Gene Sullivan live? We can show you where Gene Sullivan lives. Here are the records. Here's the house that he bought. Here's his phone number that he has uh, listed. Here is where he works. You have an individual. But when you're dealing with the name of a an association, that is a corporate entity. So how do you how do you really know where to go? So every corporation needs to register. The difference, however, of course, is that in a corporation that deals with homeowner associations, it is considered a nonprofit corporation. And so uh, some people are saying, well, you know, we need to to change this because homeowner associations, uh, FEMA's got it all wrong. Homeowner associations aren't businesses. Uh, and so we've got to uh, uh, we've got to get them to change that. And so I I don't know if that is the way to go because a business or a corporation, yes, the association is a business, a nonprofit business. Their business happens to be the operations of the collective homes of the individual homeowners who live in that uh, particular association or in that property or neighborhood. And uh, there's been some issues because you've had uh, one uh, one congressman in particular who has been trying to work on trying to get things relabeled with uh, FEMA. His name is uh, Congressman Steve Israel, and he's introduced legislation that would end the designation of cooperatives, condos, townhomes as businesses and make them eligible for federal disaster grants. And uh, the problem is, is that he's not getting very far with, with his legislation. And people are saying, why is that? Well, some people want to go to his defense and they say, oh, it's uh, uh, because of, oh, I know who it is. And uh, he happens to be a Democrat, so let's blame the Republicans. And so uh, you have uh, people saying, well, you know what happened this last year, you know, the defeat of Eric Cantor as a Republican primary in, in the primaries. Uh, you know, that means that there is uh, a new uh, a new wave coming. And, of course, those Republicans don't want to see any kind of legislation passed. Um, uh, and, and during this uh, time, they don't want to upset the apple cart. And people, that's just a bunch of baloney. As much as I know that partisan politics are a part of uh, our landscape, whether it's on the federal or state level, one of the things, if you ever get a chance to lobby at our uh, on the federal government level or on the state level, and I've had the opportunity of doing that and meeting a lot of our state legislators year after year for a good number of years now, do you realize that a majority of all of the items that are discussed are not partisan at all? They're not Democrat or Republican? They are not... Uh, liberal or conservative, they are issues, and uh, people are trying to work in trying to get uh, things uh, done. And so having this kind of discourse doesn't help anything uh, in the, the landscape. To me, that's just a rationalization. People saying uh, in uh, Congress that one of the reasons they're not getting anything done is just because of of partisanship. I suppose that, that that's... Uh, there is some truth to that. But the other part of the real reason why things aren't happening right now is we're in a, an election cycle. And within the next 30 days, or just a little bit more than 30 days, we're going to be electing uh, people for Congress again. And at this particular time, there aren't a lot of Congress uh, of our uh, representatives at Congress who are that interested in um, writing and trying to push through new legislation, they're working on getting reelected. So this uh, whole idea of uh, just saying partisanship is going to be the reason that we can just uh, quickly categorize that nothing gets done, uh, I, I don't buy it. And I don't buy it uh, because, like I said, just take a look right now. People are trying to get reelected. That's where the emphasis is. And I wish people would just be a little bit more straightforward. And the second issue, like I said before, is that 
Most issues are not partisan issues. They are not liberal or conservative issues. They are issues that we all deal with, and people need to uh, to understand that. And so I, uh, I think those things uh, would be a lot helpful. There's another issue, though, to this whole idea, and that's uh, the purpose of organizations like FEMA. How far should the government be able to uh, be expected to go to take care of us when things go wrong in our life? I think that's a bigger question and one I'd like to explore a little bit on the show today. But let's take a break right now, so don't go away. When we come back, let's talk about uh, FEMA. Uh, can we get uh, a organization that can truly meet everybody's needs 100% of the time? Let's talk about it after these messages. <music> 